journalists here were expected to sort of cover up for powerful people, to partake in the culture of silence, and my mother refused to do that. This really put her in a sort of ultra-minority. For decades, she was the number one voice that encapsulated the success of a woman going against everything. She had hundreds of thousands of readers. She just blew the newspapers out of the water. When political parties are threatened by a journalist, they will isolate them, they will dehumanize them. In the case of Daphne, they will demonize them. They have made me into what in effect is a national scapegoat. And this has gone on for 30 years. Political parties here perversely own television stations. Therefore, most people get their information from political parties. People have no idea of how she was targeted so viciously. I got used to it, you know, like a scarf always around the room. But my biggest concern is that because people see what happened to me, they don't want to do it. She had so many sources and so much information was coming to her. She couldn't handle it on her own. She was the source of so much information that was about to bring the reputation of our country down in tatters. When the Panama Papers broke, most journalists in Malta took it at face value. These politicians have offshore companies, it's unethical, that's it, case closed. We had people in a position of power who were trying to set up dodgy structures in order to funnel money away from jurisdictions that would have otherwise traced them. What Daphne did is she exposed them. She didn't stop working on that investigation even after the subject had changed. In denouncing this, Daphne was perceived as a threat to the easy money that many people were benefiting from. Nothing was normal around that time. We were in this kind of emergency situation already. All these sort of forces were working together against my mom. I was working full time on the Paradise Papers investigation. And we had sort of settled down for the day at this big table that we shared as a desk. My mother had to go to the bank. She left the house. And then I heard the explosion. Ever since then, everything changed completely. Within the first hour of her death, they had started putting up an incredible fight to defend her work. Suddenly, we had to transform ourselves into a kind of advocacy organization. Before that, we were just people trying to, you know, live our lives. Today, I am reminded that no matter what happened to Daphne, no matter how hard certain forces will work to suppress or distort her work, even in death, she lives on. Daphne lives on in my three sons, who have so much of her strength and integrity. She lives on in the people who choose to protect her legacy. The immediate reaction we had was, we've got to make sure this doesn't fade away. This is why it's been so important to us, even on a personal level, that, you know, civil society movement emerged, because imagine doing all that on our own. Change, societal, cultural, political, far-reaching and meaningful change requires a critical mass of people who are prepared to actively participate in the shaping of their own future, that of their children and this country. Simply agreeing is not enough. We must do. Because if not us, then who? This was more than a year after the Panama Papers. All that evidence of corruption had been published and nothing happened. And this investigation into money laundering and corruption ultimately led to her murder. Whoever wanted to kill Daphne didn't only want to achieve her death. 
they also wanted to achieve the end of her investigations. They also wanted to secure their own impunity. It's only by force that there is going to be any investigative work done. Justice for Daphne is not just about jailing her murderers. It's about justice for her stories, which is that all the people she exposed, they have to face justice too. It is very important that they stay exposed because Daphne, unfortunately, was very well known in Malta, but she only became a big star of the anti-corruption movement internationally when it was too late for her. People in power, at best, stood by while she was killed. At worst, helped in getting her killed. There are many powerful, violent, dangerous, corrupt people who are fighting back against us. If there's more impunity, our lives are going to continue to be in danger. So for me, it's, it's really a question of life and death, as it was for my mother. Thank you.